Hello, this is Leisha Holmes of Key Recruitment, and I'm thrilled to be joined today by a new face to our channel, and that is Aaron Meyerful, who is the sales manager of the Hiring Hub. Hello to you, Aaron. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much indeed. So to our audience who may not be familiar with yourself personally or the Hiring Hub, would you like to give us an overview of who you are and what your business does, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm the sales manager for Hiring Hub, but on the recruitment side of the business. Um, it is an interesting model, a bit different. Uh, basically, Hiring Hub's what you would call a digital marketplace. So we all use marketplaces every day, even if we don't know it. Things like TripAdvisor, Uber, Checker Trade, even Deliveroo, they're all marketplaces. And they're all built upon the premise that nowadays customers choose services based on reviews. So we've created a model or a, a community, depends how hippie you want to be about it, where we put recruiters and employers together with the idea that the best recruiters will get the best reviews and they should be the ones that are winning work because they're good at what they do rather than just the same old names winning everything because they've got a big brand behind them. Does that make sense? Interesting, yeah, very much so. So is it, is it, is it an actual software? Is it an actual tangible thing, Hiring Hub? Yeah, it's a software, it's a portal, ultimately. I mean, how it works for you, the recruiter, is a lot simpler, basically. I mean, when you strip it all down, what we do is source jobs from employers, okay. and then we provide those opportunities to recruitment agencies, headhunters, boutiques, those kind of things. All the jobs that we supply, they're pre-qualified, they've got buy-in from the client. What, what we're basically giving you, the recruiter, is access to motivated employers with hot, urgent, qualified jobs and preferred suppliers list where we can. We run a lot of PSLs for employers at the moment. That's incredible. That's a model. <laughs> it's a good model. Yeah, definitely. And in terms yeah. of your journey over the last six months, because obviously a lot of the conversation we're going to talk about today is the impact it's had on your client base, which is potentially the same client base as mine. How's Hiring Hub coped with COVID and, and how's your world changed? Uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, the bosses are great. They've always been good. Um, a guy called Simon Swan, the founder, um, Alex Belford, one of our, the, the ops, one of the directors. And, you know, they've all been ahead of the curve and they've always put our mental well-being at the top of uh, everything. I mean, there's, um, we have a little thing on the wall that says, no job at Hiring Hub is someone else's problem. So, and I think that's been taken to heart at Hiring Hub. Everyone's kind of done that virtual hug. Every morning we have a um, like a morning meeting and we like talk about what we're going to do. But, you know, end the day by going, listen, let's push our day forward and you'll feel like you've achieved something. And, you know, I've taken it to heart. I think everyone has. Um, and yeah, we've we been we doing really well, surprisingly. But, you know, I think what you're, you're pushing at is, uh, you know, when, we, when we're talking to, we're talking to the same people, the recruiters. And at the moment, it's not so much about sales, it's more becoming the agony ant for them, isn't it? And, yeah. and like I said, to you, I said to you before, I said, I've started every call when I'm speaking and introducing our service to everyone saying, listen, I don't expect you to buy at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, things are hard, but the reality is, let's let, look at the, what best tech's out there. So when you are ready, you're ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think Hiring Hub gives you. I mean, ultimately, Hiring Hub's an interesting model because it's compelling to employers. The idea of working with agencies who are accountable for delivery or who have already been held accountable is very attractive it kind of gives the confidence that the recruiters are going to be working with come with a minimum standard you know i've worked for professional bodies i've seen professional bodies and i think they're great they add a lot to the world but let's face it you don't need to be a member of a professional outfit to operate in recruitment yep. why one of the best things about it anyone can do recruitment but also attracts the wrong type of people sometimes and that's why you get your spray and pray and cowboy recruiters sorry to entry is very minimal well it certainly was pre sort of covid you know i think that's the, that's the differentiator isn't it it's having that quality approach and you being able to sort of use that and substantiate that so just so we understand a little bit around the technology then so when you're speaking to potential recruitment businesses which is our audience our audience is all going to be recruitment business owners leaders aspiring leaders maybe people that are working as recruitment consultants thinking i'm going to set up my own one day mm. what's the advantage of having the marketplace or the technology that you for example would provide what what where, where do you see that as a return on investment well you know, harry nubs built for small to medium businesses okay. the idea is i mean it's our 
it may be airy fairy tagline that we've got, but is to democratize the recruitment industry. Our belief is the small to medium businesses are the best, the most consultative. Yeah. Um, you know, without bad mouthing the bigger boys or whatever they call all of them, you know, there's no secret to it. They they have a science behind recruitment. You have to, when you're working a big business, you've got to have KPIs and it's, you know, throw a hundred CVs at something, something will stick. The reality with smaller businesses, what makes them better is the fact that they are more consultative. If you've got to take a call and you know this better than most leisure, um, at nine o'clock at night or at the weekend to speak to a, a candidate or a client, you've got to do it to pay your electricity bill. Mm -hmm. If you think someone that works for one of the big boys, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and is taking a call past five o'clock or even getting their emails to the phone, they're not. They're just not. They're, we live and breathe this industry. We care more about it and we give a better service. And because of that, our product is inexpensive. It's built to make it a closed community, mm -hmm. but it's also built that it's not going to put you out of business, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting model. And what, what our belief is, if you give the right roles to the, you know, the independent, the small, medium-sized recruitment agencies, and they're given the same opportunity as these so-called big boys, that eventually, well, not eventually, they will win because they're better. So well, that, it's going to suit the niche because I think that's one thing that, you know, when I was think, when I was doing my research before ahead of this interview today, that's hmm. the way the market's going. There's no question about it. And I've always maintained that you need to be a niche. You need to be a go-to person, whatever your market specialism is, because you are then able to assess benchmark. You're able to consult your client properly. You are a knowledge bank of what is happening, what competitors are doing, how to advise on salary review, how to understand hmm. what's, what the next trend's going to be. And actually what your technology does is it really plays well into that niche. Yeah, it does. And maybe I'm going to be a bit controversial here because I think at the moment people are needing to pivot. I mean, one of the best things about hiring hub is that we can move with what market's busy. And, you know, if at the moment engineering, um, you know, sales, things which are remote, you can do and they're still busy and they're recruiting quite, you know, quite aggressively. But other markets aren't. Mm. So, you know, what's scary, you know, we've talked about what's scary for smaller recruiters is, well, my niche is that I have this market, or my niche is that I know this, this locality. Well, that's not going to be there anymore. I mean, the, the, the hiring hub has become even more important because I don't know about you, but I was always taught when I did recruitment, get in front of the employers yep. as soon as possible because you've got better ownership, you've got, you've got more chance of pushing them in your direction, put your personality... Ultimately, use your dark arts of recruitment. Make it sound like Darth Vader. <laughs> but that's the reality. That's what we were taught. And it's the same in any sales. You get yourself in front of them. But that ain't going to happen short term, medium term. You're not going to meet any client. Not this year. Maybe not even the beginning of next year. No clients invite you into their office. Well, they're still going to be recruiting. So if they're still going to be recruiting, how do they choose who to work with? But they're going to use the same old names. No, they're not. They're, they're, we know they're not the greatest. What they, what they want to do is be connected to the best recruiters. And that's what Hiring Hub gives them. The fact we plug into that gap. You know, you choose to go to a lawyer, you know, get a painter, a decorator in your house, a builder like you've got at the moment. You do that. <laughs> you do it because your, mate, your mates, your friends, your, uh, your peers have told you it's good. From an employer's point of view, that's exactly what they're going to get. You know, Joe Bloggs wants to work with the best recruiter in such and such an industry. Well, Joe, Joe and Bloggs uh, company has worked with these guys and they've given them a great review. So that's where it becomes compelling. And, um, you know, what, what I'm saying is, I suppose, going back to your point about promoting specialism, I think at the moment people are specialist in recruitment. Yeah. And that's, that's a real skill. If you know how to network and market, if you know how to source a candidate, if you know how to find, and we'll, 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 Joe talked about this the other week in, in one of your other podcasts, and she talked about, you know, the ability of being able to get deep down the person, spe the person specification. That's what keeps one in a job. Mm. And the reality is if you do that well, yeah. right, that's, that's half the job done. So I think at the moment, what well, hiring hub are having a lot of success with new recruiters is people are looking to move into different markets who are bloody good recruiters. And yeah, why, why we are here to, um, you know, to do the work for the employer, to choose the agencies and promote them. We're also trying to help 
other recruitment agencies grow into different disciplines. Yeah. We've got hundreds of jobs and we're bringing on you know, hundreds of jobs every month. And the reality behind that is they're in different industries. Yeah. People need the opportunity to get on them. That's what we're promoting. We're promoting good recruitment practices. We're promoting ethical recruitment practices. We're promoting ethical employers. We make everyone accountable. No, it's really good. And in terms of that level of accountability then, is your product based on algorithms or is it actually a human being saying, well, I think this is the best match for what this employer needs? A bit of both, to be honest. Um, the, the, yeah, it's, uh, we've got a lady called Anna Dick um, who heads up our tech team. Very unfortunate surname, but she owns the dick jokes. <laughs> so there you go. Thank <laughs> um, you recruitment, Anna. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but she's brilliant she's done some amazing thing on the tech side so yeah there are algorithms involved in terms of stats and recording statistical analysis and stuff like that but that all works to help the recruiter one of the things that people ask us is how many agencies work on each role is it going to be a bum fight for positions mm. now the reality is we control that okay but the the reality of how that's controlled is a lot by shining the light on the recruiter say look you've Works on 100 roles, you've not had an interview, you're becoming very unattractive to, very much so. to the employers. So it, does, um, it creates a level of accountability that maybe they weren't aware of, of actually doing. So that's, that's interesting. So in terms of the technology space, where do you see this going now? We, we're, you know, we're, we've got to learn to live in a COVID world. You know, we, we know we've got at least six more months of navigating what this current situation is. Where, where, where do you, I mean, what's Hiring Hub doing to sort of take advantage, I guess, of where you sit in the market and what, what other advances do you see within technology and what can recruitment companies do to ensure that they're maximising what's out there? Yeah, I think from a recruiter's point of view, I think the, the old school is hit the phones in it, cold calling, and that's still going to be there. I think yeah. I read something on Agency Central that said that 50% of all new businesses won from uh, cold calling. I'd hazard a bet now that's half through mm. COVID. Mm. Um, what, I mean, I think you talked about this the other day, content marketing, um, networking, social yeah. media. You've got to be thinking out of the box. Um, you know, I hear some great stories about people finding new business, you know, job boards and you know, friends. I think friends is a huge one during COVID. People that own businesses, you know, and ask them to help. It's about trust. Yeah. And I do think there's an element of, being altruistic to people that you know, you know, if you know that somebody's, you know, needs needs a, an HR manager or whatever, you're more likely to go and help them if you know them personally than that if goes back to reputation. On LinkedIn, it's all about reputation. Yeah. So listen, I, you, you know, you said I think on your thing it's about reputation and you know your website and yeah. listen, there's loads of new ways, loads of new recruitment tech out there. There is, there's loads of stuff you can do. Um, there's, there's similar models to ours. Our model was born off the back of one in America, in a way. Um, the, but I tell you, I tell you how it was born because that's interesting, I suppose. Um, Simon Swan, he was an employer. He worked as a journalist and editor of a magazine. Um, he went out to market to find some journalist, I guess, and he got out there and he's like, "I've got like, who's good," and he's like, "I don't know, but then you've got to try." And he's like. I'm not spending hundreds of thousands of pounds. I can't order, um, I can't order a, a cab nowadays. I can't order a pizza. I can't go on holiday without knowing who's good. So there's got to be something out there. And his mate worked for the old Hill McGlynn. I think they're Randstad now. Mm -hmm. Said there's something in America. Um, it's called Scout Bounty, a couple of them. And they basically aimed at American recruiters, 180, all sourcing. And that's what it's about. It wouldn't work, it doesn't work in England. And I'd used it actually when I worked in American recruitment. So it wasn't the greatest. It was a bit throw something at the wall kind of model. Mm -hmm. So he kind of developed and came up with the idea of making it a 360 model where we would be involved in the process. And mm -hmm. that's why it worked. But yeah, getting off the subject, but the, the point being, I think technology and all that stuff's got to be there. You've got to use it. America have been very far ahead in that kind of stuff. You know, Bounty and Scout, which are the forerunners to us, had over a billion pounds worth of investment in the last few years. Nice. So all kind of models out there in America are starting to move on to that. And, you know, things like Talent Kernel here, they've just been sold by Career Builder and rebranded. What did they call Job Feed, I think it was. Um, that's another one. They scrape all of the job sites where you can see which employers are recruiting. 
Right. So that's a nice way of doing it. And there's loads of like internal recruitment Slack channels, you know, trying to find it. And there's lots of things out there. So actually, for a, for a lot of our audience who are possibly listening and watching this, thinking about budget, you know, you, you, you're heading into the second half of your financial year now, thinking, you know, you've probably reduced what you're expecting to build in certain markets. You might be looking at set, trying to save money, but actually mm. by doing that, you couldn't, you know, it's off to spite your face because you're going to, not but not have the advances that are out there the technology has to be used in combination with being old-fashioned and picking up the yeah. phone and doing business yeah. development to people that know you but actually you could be missing out on 90 the iceberg mentality isn't it you could be missing out 90 percent of the market by not using yeah. technology i'll tell you um we we did a uh, a webinar um during lockdown with uh, the guy who wrote chimp paradox oh yeah um, Peters. He broke yeah brilliant brilliant one but he talked about marginal gains and trimming the fat and um well the trimming the fat idea was like listen if you had a job board that you made a placement with last year why you still got it this year mm. you know do you need it is it going to make you money especially now you've got to trim the fat um marginal gains was a really interesting one maybe because i'm not a business owner i've never really thought about it but it's really apparent to what you just said there um it's like if i went to a salesman if I gave you one pound for 10 pounds, would you do it? And so would you give me one pound for 10 pounds? Absolutely. All salesmen would say, yeah. What if I gave you nine pounds for 10 pounds? Would you do it? And I was like, I never really thought about it. That's what investment is. And he, he talked about marginal gains, take, making, and I, talk, I think I said before, you know, about my boss leaves the, the morning meeting every day. Just move forward one step. You, even if you're in this time where it's hard, it's about just taking a step forward, even if it's marginal. If we had we charged twenty percent fees, twenty five percent fee, we did it for a good reason pre lockdown. Maybe now we've got to do it. We've got to change the way we think and win business in different ways. We're not we're not sacrificing, you know, what we're offering. What we are doing is moving with the economy or moving with where we are as a as a company. Well, and and also like you said, I mean, obviously America does tend to take a bit of a, a leap. Um, in technology ahead of the UK traditionally, but I think the models are very different. So what's happening over there now that you think that you predict might happen over here in the coming months? Yeah, um, well, I know what, well, Scout and Bounty um, introduced something um, which basically ran uh, preferred suppliers list. It became, it became something like to manage your recruitment uh, process for bigger companies and that's been very successful I think that's where not not the RPO model not the MSP kind of model so it's not I think and I'll tell you my, my wife you know works for one and uh, well works for um well works directly for an employer and they have an RPO and I've heard it from many other places out there that you know a lot of them don't perform aren't performing and um, the lack of visibility in it your lack of control you know there's some great ones out there absolutely but they're expensive and in a time like this again trimming the fat why are you using it if it's wasting money so i think you know internal recruiters what's the most common thing you get on the phone my job as an in-house recruiter is not to use agencies to you say know what i mean of course it is yeah yeah but why are you using an rpm absolutely. why are you paying you're doubling, 20 pounds? You're doubling. Your costs. You pay. Are you paying twenty pounds, fifty pounds per interview call? Then um, someone to go through a CV. You know what I mean? And then paying you, you know, up to a hundred grand for being an internal recruiter. I mean, these are crazy numbers that we're talking about. And you know, listen, hiring hubs, you know, it is a marketplace, but we're we're developing that. You know, one of the things we introduced is um, a referral thing. And this is what we did during lockdown. And the idea is. If you're a recruiter and you're working with Hiring Hub, but you have a, a separate PSL, you're a preferred recruiter for yeah. an employer. Okay. Um, and they come to you, listen, you're an IT specialist, but I've got a legal role. Is there any way you can do it? And you're like, oh, I'll give it a go. But you may, potentially won't get it, and you could start to lose that, that relationship. And I've heard this loads over lockdown. You know, I usually do this, but they've asked me to do this, and I've done well, blah, blah, blah. The reality is what we've done is I suppose it's a bit like any split fee network is we've given them the opportunity to give it us and we'll put it to our marketplace and then you'll take a cut of every placement that happens with that employer. You still own that PSL. 
you're still the name, but our recruiters are making sure that you're employer. So it's re that's how we've pivoted from our side. And it's been good. And we've got the portal idea as well, where we are going to be managing PSLs, give them vis visibility, um, let them control, and get them to have that statistical analysis of you know, their cost and their recruitment process. And that will win us loads of roles. They can then bring their own PSL onto Hiring Hub um, and bit the, one of the biggest attractions from an employer's point of view is they only have to sign one terms of business. Yeah, cool. Now, any recruiter and any employer will know this is the, the ball eight that happens when you have to bring on a new recruiter in terms of agreeing terms of business and agreeing fees, blah, 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 that, all that stuff. The time it takes, bureaucracy, the legal team, it just takes forever. And that's why recruiters are very good. They go straight to hiring manager, put the CV oh, in there, and yeah. then they have to reverse engineer it. <laughs> but from an employer's point of view, if this is all pre-agreed and they've only brought on one agency and they get you know, a yellow pages of rated and reviewed agencies out yeah. there and they, they're getting their job filled, which is ultimately what they're after. Oh, well, isn't that, it? Mm. Yeah, it's the, the holy grail for them. It is the holy grail. I can see why this is very attractive to employers and to recruiters alike. And I think it's possibly way, the way the market's going to go. Certainly for smaller businesses, you can actually, it's like a cooperative basically, isn't it? You know? I, yeah, one of the guys who's on our board, Peter Searle, is like the Kevin Bacon of recruitment. Um, he's, yeah, he used to he run a decade for 10 years. He, I think he helped set up Wapsco, but I might be making that up. He's now running Air Swift, uh, the biggest oil and gas recruitment agency out there. And he, um, taught, he did a webinar with us as well during lockdown. He talked about how ADECO have thousands of offices around the UK. And the reason they get those offices, I suppose, cheaply is because they sign up to long leases. So when they've had to furlough people, make them redundant, it's kind of set them back a little bit. So there's, the idea is that this market is going to become even more fragmented going forward. And the small to medium businesses, they're the ones that are going to be more versatile. And they're, they're the ones... Nimble. You're more nimble, your costs are lower, you're leaner. And, and it's as simple as that. So yeah, no, yeah. it's definitely, definitely a good time. So in terms of, you, you, you mentioned quite early on about the way that Hiring Hub have looked after sort of well-being and, and so on. So what, what would your masterclass be in how to keep yourself mentally and physically well? I, I think what Hiring Hub did very well is that virtual hub. Is the, mm. the point is everyone's different. Um, the way I need help to the way my colleague needs help is different. It's about listening. And Harry and Hub have been very sensitive to it. We've all had problems, you know. You know, I've got I've got house guests living here. I've got a house guest dog living here with me oh. at the moment. I'm in lockdown. I'm uh, selling my house and all sorts of stuff. And oh, I've been, I've been going on, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm still I'm running a department. I would only made manager of my department like a couple of months before lockdown happened. Right. <laughs> so you really yeah. have been on this upward trajectory of learning. Yeah, but it's, you know, I think the point being is with Hiring Hub and with what we do, we're, we're speaking, and especially yourself as well, you're speaking to recruits, you're speaking to small business owners no, every day. No. And it's hard for them. Mm. And, you know, I, I, I think there's no way around what's happened. There's no. No, nothing we can do about it. But what we, are, what we can do is try and stay ahead of the curve and try and move our world forward every day. And... You know, I'm probably going to start singing a hymn soon or chanting, but, the, you know, we've all become a little bit more spiritual, haven't we, because of all this Definitely. stuff. And, well, we've all just been a bit calm, become a bit calmer and a bit kinder. And I think, you know, when we were talking off camera, you know, one of the key things that clearly clients are going to remember you for is that you don't ring them up and say, you know, I'm selling. You, How are you doing? And that's something that's really stood out for me that I, you know, all my clients, obviously, generally speaking our business owners they're asking me business owners and one summed it up for me she said you're the only person that ever rings me up and says how are you mm. we she, she's a mum she's got two kids she's she's got 20 odd staff three offices she's gone through absolute you know torture as, a, as has every business owner we've all had anxiety babies probably on a daily basis and I actually think we can all learn a lot from that really simple you know, every day just take a step forward. Whatever that looks like, you know, what, what's happening in the broader world is way beyond our control. So just control what you can within your own world. And if it's not about just taking that one step forward every day, I think that's really wise words. Well, look, we'll make sure all your information's on the 
the uh, YouTube and the podcast channels that we're on. And it's been an absolute pleasure. And I have to say, I know that you pre-warned that we might get interrupted. A bit disappointed not to see your little ones. Um, you can see my toy. I'm working in his, uh, in his office. In his office. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's been lovely to see you. And thank you so much for joining us. And a shout out actually to Alex Belford because he, will, he knows who I am. So big yeah. hi to me, to, to Alex from me. But thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it, Aaron. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh